Nanny Helen Burroughs. On May 2nd, 1879, Nanny Helen Burroughs was born in Orange, Virginia to parents John and Jenny Burroughs, who were formerly enslaved. Mr. John Burroughs worked as a farmer and was also a Baptist preacher. Nanny was the eldest of the Burroughs' children. When she was five years old, her father died, forcing her to move to Washington, D.C. to live with her aunt, Cordelia Mercer. The Burroughs family had a history of gaining skills to create income for survival. Burroughs and her mother were able to bring those skills with them to Washington, D.C. to make a living. The Burroughs family took full advantage of the plethora of opportunities available for them in Washington, D.C. Nanny was a bright and gifted student who shined in her academic studies. Her academic prowess continued throughout her schooling, helping her to graduate with honors from M Street High School in Washington, D.C. As a high school student, Burroughs was active within her school's activities. She was the organizer of the Harriet Beecher Stowe Literary Society at the M Street High School. She was also able to study business and domestic sciences, giving her a number of skills to make a decent living. Burroughs' fire and determination led her to meet two women who were active within the women's suffrage movement that inspired her, Anna J. Cooper and Mary Church Terrell. After graduating from high school in 1896, Burroughs sought a teaching job within the Washington, D.C. school system. It is said that she didn't get the teaching position because her skin was too dark. She was denied a teaching position by fellow blacks, but she did not allow that experience to stop her from teaching. In 1898, Burroughs moved to Louisville, Kentucky to work for the National Baptist Convention as an editorial secretary and bookkeeper for the Foreign Mission Board. Burroughs was one of the founding women of the Women's Convention, which helped to serve the National Baptist Convention. She served with the Women's Convention for 47 years and was the president for 13 years. At the time, the National Baptist Convention was considered one of the largest African-American organizations for black women. The National Baptist Convention received help from the National Association of Colored Women to serve black women in America. One of the outcomes of the partnership was the creation of the National Association of Wage Earners, an organization that was created to help black women earn better wages. Burroughs served as the president of the National Association for Wage Earners, and Mary McLeod Bethune served as the vice president of the organization. In addition to being a member of the National Association of Wage Earners and the National Baptist Convention, she served with the NAACP and around six other organizations. Burroughs began working with Herbert Hoover around 1928 to help with black home and land ownership. She also gave her famous speech, How White and Colored Women Can Cooperate in Building a Christian Civilization in 1938 at the Virginia Women's Missionary Union at Richmond. As a response to her not being able to teach in Washington, D.C. and the continued discrimination black women faced in America at the time, Burroughs decided to open her own school for women called the National Training School in 1908. The school started in a farmhouse and gave women who could only take classes in the evening a chance to earn an education. Because Burroughs was such a great teacher, the word spread quickly, increasing the popularity of the school, which meant the enrollment drastically increased. Burroughs was using the school to help prepare black women to become the greatest versions of themselves and in turn help all of black America become the greatest version of itself. The school was shaped by their 3B motto, the Bible, the bath, and the broom. In addition to the skills the women were learning, Burroughs made sure there was an emphasis on teaching black history. So she created her own black history course for her students. Burrow was preparing the black women of the National Training School to combat the wage labor problems affecting black women and negative images of black people by the white media. The women were prepared to combat racism, elevate themselves and their race, and do whatever work needed to be done to be able to strive despite being victimized by racism. Burroughs was a popular person because of her efforts to educate and equip black women to be self-sufficient and create a reasonable living. But she was seen as a villain by those who wanted black women to stay silent and only engage in domestic work. Her being rejected by the blacks within the Washington DC school system was a blessing in disguise. She was able to help so many black women from poor backgrounds who would have been overlooked by the so-called black elite. Her grassroots efforts helped generations of black women find their callings outside of their homes. 
During the 1920s, Burroughs wrote and published two plays, The Slab Town District Convention and Where's My Wandering Boy Tonight? Nanny Helen Burroughs died in 1961 of natural causes, leaving behind a legacy of service and commitment to her people. The National Training School was renamed the Nanny Helen Burroughs School in 1964. During and after her life, she was honored by receiving an honorary Master of Arts degree from Eckstein Norton University in 1907. May 10th of 1975, Nanny Helen Burroughs Day was declared in Washington, D.C., and Nanny Helen Burroughs Avenue was named after her. To the incredible Miss Nanny Helen Burroughs, we proudly stand on your shoulders. For more information, please visit www.ontheshoulders1.com and you can support On the Shoulders of Giants on Patreon by visiting patreon.com backslash O-T-S-O-G.